Last time we took a look at the default files that Django ships with. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about apps. So in Django, apps is a way that we group related functionality together. So if we had things to do with like managing users, authentication, we would add those in an app. If we had other things like managing to-dos, create, read, update to-dos, we would add things that do that also in an app. So let's go ahead and first create our first app. So to create an app, you want to do Python, manage.py, start app, and then we give this app a name. So I'm going to give in, so I'm going to be creating two apps. One is going to be the authentication app. So you do authentication. And also I'm going to create another app for managing to-dos. So I'm gonna create this one to do. Alright, so when you create this, we also have the to-do app created. Alright, so so basically when we create a new app, we get a folder created for us, and that folder contains different things. So it provides us a way to write our views. So views is a place where we will be basically adding all our logic. So things to maybe define what we need to send back to the user, things like handling the user's post request, those will be in the views. So here we have the test file. So here we can write all the tests for our app here. We have the models file. So the models basically is to set up our database tables and also define how those should be. So we have the apps file. So this is just for configuration. So by default, it sets up the app name. We also have the admin pi file. So here we can so we can use this to add our app to the Django admin so that it can now appear basically in the admin section. So every time you create an app, you need to add it in the settings.py in the settings.py installed app section. So we want to come over here and add authentication. Authentication and also to do and also to do so authentication like this. So this is a very important step. So never forget, never forget to do it. Because if you don't, then your application is pretty much not going to work. So now that we have our app set up, the next thing we're going to need to do is see how to basically have something else that's not the default homepage. So let's create a view that should be able to show a list of a users to do's. So we said we put those views in views. Okay, so here in views, let's say we wanted to render out a list of items. So we would come here and define basically a function. So let's do def. Since it's gonna be the entry file, we can call it index. So you can say index. So this takes in request. So in here, we can say return. Let's render. So we want to render a template. So by default, Django is going to be looking for the templates in our current app. So it's gonna go here and then it's going to look for a folder called templates. So let's create it. So in here, I want to create another folder. So by the convention, it should be the name of our app. So here we can do to do. And then inside here, now we can create our file. So here, maybe we can say index.html like this. So here to be, so here I'm going to put a simple HTML page. So I'm going to say maybe uh, home. Then in here, I can say we put an S3 and say list of to-dos. Then maybe I can say, let me have a UL, LI. So let's have go home. Then let me duplicate this and save. So for us to be able to render out this HTML page, we would come here in views and say render. So render takes in the request first. So we pass request. And then the next part is gonna be the template name. So to pass the template name, we want to put the route, the path to this. Where are we working in? Oh, we are working in, uh, we are working in, we are working in authentication. So let's move this to the views for the to-do. So here, we need to now render out this index HTML. So we can do to-do, then slash index.html and save. So let's, back, let's run back our server. So we want to run server again. So if you go back to the server, you see that it is still rendering this. And that's because we have not connected this view to a URL. So to be able to connect this to a URL, what we want to do is we want to create a urls.py file for our app. So here you want to do urls.py 
So in here you define URL patterns, but before we define those, let's first import let's first import some utilities. So from Django dot URLs import path. So now here we can define our URL patterns. This is going to be a list of our path. So we can define a path and then we want to define where the view that will handle the request to that path. So let's also import views. So from, from that import views. So once every time the user comes to the default page, we want to render out views dot index like this. So also we need to specify a name for this. So specify a name equals something like home. So every time we are using this view in our application, we access it using the name. So that makes sure that every time we change something here, we like change the path or we move it to a different host and the path changes. We don't have to go on and refactor everywhere we are using this path. We can just, the, the name will still work even when we change the path. So now that we have this path, we are going to be adding other paths here specific for our app. So if we wanted to like create a to-do, edit a to-do, confirm a to-do delete, we will be having other definitions here. So for them to work, we need a way to add them to our main application URL routing. So we want to go to our main URLs file. So we'll go here. So here we need to import something called include. So include helps us to basically add in all the routes from a specific app with just one line. So here we can do we basically have the same thing so we'll have so they are going to be on the home and what we want to do is we want to include and then we want to include all our urls in the other file so this is going to be to do dot urls i believe that's how we called it yes and save this file so when we save this you see that the server restarts and now if we go back you said now we have our html being served okay looking good Okay, so now that we have our URLs being hooked in and we can see our HTML, I want to show you how, how Django basically handles static files for, the, for an app. So static files can be things like images, things like fonts, things like CSS. So by default, we saw Django looks for the templates in the app slash templates slash the app. So when it comes to static, it is not a lot different. So Django will be looking in a folder called static. So here we need to have a folder called static. And in here, then we need to also have the app name. So we need to have to do here. So remember now we want to render an image to the site. So I'm going to bring in our application logo. Now let me just get it here. So I'm just gonna go to Figma. So let me export this file. Okay, so moving on. So Okay, so moving on. So we need to create the static folder. And then in here we have the app name. So now we can go ahead and create basically things like CSS, things like JS, uh, things like images, so IMG, so IMG. So I'm going to bring in this demo image. So I'm gonna call it logo for us to see how it's gonna work. Then I will move it to IMG. Okay, so now if we wanted to render this image or any JS file, we would go in our template. So let's go to this template we created, then index. So let's say here we wanted to show that logo. So what we'll do is we need to load a tag. So whenever we want to access static files, things like JS, CSS, images, we can use a load static tag. So here you want to do this syntax and then do load static like this. Okay, so when you do load static, then now we can have like our image, so img source equals. Okay, so by default, you know, you would come over here and do things like to do uh, slash img slash logo dot png. So this is not how we do it in Django. So in, in Django, the way we do it is you use this static utility. So you want to come over here and inside here, use these tags like this. So you want to now use our tag static and 
here you put the relative path to that file so when you use the site now we need to specify a relative path to this file so you can do to do slash img slash logo dot png like this and then save 